What needs to be considered when coding answer options and questions in Lime Survey? First of all, what is this coding anyway? With the coding, I influence how the questions are later presented during the data analysis, for example in statistical software. So I can say for each question how it should be coded and also for the individual answer options. For this purpose, I have prepared a small test questionnaire here and let's take a quick look at it. First of all, I have a question of the type long free text. And with such a free text, of course, you don't have to code the answer options, but I only need a single code and that is the question code. I just called it Q1 and so you will find it later in the answer table or in their statistics software, this question is then answered again under the question code Q1. Then I have a list of radio buttons question here. That is, it is a question where the respondents are given different answer options and let's take a quick look here under edit to see what that looks like. First of all, of course, I need the question code again, which I have now called Q2 here. Then I have to provide the answer options with codes here as well. And it is important that you only enter numerical codes here, i.e. 1, 2, 3, so that this is later recognized in the statistics software as a numerical and not as a string variable. And that's actually all you need for this list of radio buttons. And then, of course, there are plenty of other types of questions. As an example, I have now added an array question here, because it is used very often. And with the array question, you now have to code a little more. I'll go to edit here so that you can see it. And you have to do two things here. One is, of course, the question itself is coded with Q3 and then you have to do two different things. And you have to code the sub-questions. And these are the individual statements or the individual lines in this array question. I just called it sub-question 1, 2, 3 and the code that is given here is SQ001, i.e. for sub-question 001. You can leave it that way, because it is not important that these are only numerical data, because these individual sub-questions later become individual variables in the statistical software. And the second thing is that you have to code the answer options again, of course. For this you can switch to this other tab here and there I would recommend, as with the question before, to code the answer options with numbers again. So, that's basically the most important thing and now I still want to show how you can now recognize how questions are then encoded, i.e. how they will appear later in the statistics software and one possibility is to look into the so-called logic file. To do this, I go back to the survey overview here and then go to survey logic file here under tools. There you will find all the information about the variables or questions that you have in the questionnaire. Here, for example, we first have this question Q1. Nothing else was coded there. Then we have question Q2 here and then you can see that there is an answer option of 1, 2, 3. And then we have the matrix question, which is called Q3. And now we see here how these sub-questions are coded. So it's very important to remember that, so that such a sub-question appears later in the data set in such a way that I first have the question code, then an underscore and then the sub-question code. And so these three sub-questions appear here on SQ001, SQ002 and SQ003 and in each case the information about how the interviewee answered, with the answer options 1, 2, 3. So in principle, you can see everything here in this logic file, how the coding is done and if you want to look at an example again, i.e. want to look again, what does it look like in concrete terms, if the respondents have given any specific answer, then you can. Just activate the survey as a test and then look in the answer table to see what the answers look like and I'll show that briefly now. To do this, I go back to the survey overview and then click here on activate this survey. There are still a few things being asked here. I leave the preferences and go to save and activate and then it asks again if I want to switch to closed mode here, so that only certain people should participate in the survey and I say continue in open access mode and then the survey is already activated. So now, by going to run survey up here, I can simply enter data and then look in the answer table to see how it is displayed. I just called the questionnaire test coding here and then here comes the open survey. I just enter a few letters and then here comes the question list radio buttons. I now choose the answer one and then we have the array question here. With these three sub-questions, I now choose answer 1, answer 2 and then I leave this default setting no answer and then we can see directly how it is displayed. As soon as this is sent, the answers are saved, is also displayed here and then I can click on answers here in the survey overview here in the bottom left corner and there I can then look at the answers that have now been entered. 
So first of all, I see here again the encoding that we already know, Q1 for the first question and then I see here, the first person who was interviewed entered these letters here. Okay, then here we have the coding Q2 for the second question and here I can see how the person answered. Once with answer 1, that's the text I entered for this answer option, and the square brackets of how this is encoded. So with 1, so you can see later in the table, for example in your statistics software, that question Q2 was then answered with the code 1. And then we have the three sub-questions on the matrix question. As I said, this is then displayed here in individual variables. So there are now three variables later in the statistics software. And here you can see this coding very well again. So here you have Q3 underlined SQ001 for the first sub-question. The answer was 1. Then we have Q3 SQ002. Here the answer 2 was given, seen in square brackets. And then we underlined the Q3 SQ003. And nothing was entered here. So there you can see that the coding in Lime survey for no answer, so to speak, is that nothing is entered in the table. And this is also important to know later for the statistics software, so that no information is not coded here, for example with a minus 1 or similar, but that simply nothing is entered in the answer table. This will then later be defined in your statistics software, usually a so-called system missing value and if you want, you can then recode it accordingly. Okay, so much for coding in Lime survey. These were the three most common types of questions. Free text, list, radio buttons, and array. Of course, this also works with all other question types. You can simply insert this and then, as I said, look in the logic file to see what the coding is, or enter answers here and then look in the answer table to see how the answers were encoded. Good luck with the application.